Hi, everyone. Thanks for being here again. Uh, my name is Anthony Fontana. I work with our Link Central team to help every all of our students and families navigate the enrollment process here at CU Denver. Uh, we've got a whole host of folks with us today to answer the questions that you, uh, you pre-submitted. We're also going to have some time for you all to, uh, to put questions in the Q&A. Uh, along with the, the panelists that you see, we also have a team of ghost panelists behind the scenes that are uh, experts across all areas of campus that can, can help answer those questions for you. Uh, so we're going to turn that on at about 4.30. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to, as you see on, on many of our screens here, we have a Links Together, which has been a, a committee of, of a pretty good-sized uh, number of folks across campus that have been working on planning for this, uh, this on-campus return here uh, at, at a pretty large scale for the fall. So I'm going to turn it over to Chris Puckett and Amber Long, two of our two of our leads there, to introduce themselves and talk a little bit about what the uh, the Links Together team has been doing. Everyone, welcome. My name is Amber Long. I'm the Executive Director of Wellness and Recreation Services here at CU Denver. Also part of the Links Together team, which, as Anthony graciously said, has been working very hard for a while now to make sure that the return to campus efforts go seamlessly and you all have a wonderful experience and coming back to our fabulous campus. Um, I do wanna point out that we're having this, this student facing town hall specifically because we wanted to make sure that students had all the information. Faculty staff members have been working on returning to campus for the last few months and a lot of the university uh, communications have been focused on that effort. We're now turning our attention to you as the students who really do need to know what to do to get ready to come back to campus. So the information that you see and hear today is specifically for you. So ask all the questions that you can think of and know that all the people on this screen are also available via email pretty much all the time. Chris? Great, my name is Chris Puckett. Uh, I am an attorney by trade, but over the last year I've been engaged in uh, our COVID efforts and links together has been a project that I've been co-leading with the Dean of our liberal arts and science college all summer. And uh, Amber's absolutely right. We are here to try and answer your questions, uh, try and hopefully lessen some of the anxiety that you may be feeling. I know I think back about the God, 30 years ago that I arrived in Denver to go to college for the first time and my dad dropped me off and then drove back to Kansas city. Um, that's not going to happen to you, but I do remember what it was like, and I know we all have a lot of nervous energy anyway, and I think this fall is probably going to be a little bit different for most of us, and so I think our goal is to help give you the information so you can make good decisions for yourself and understand what it is that we're, we've been up to, what we've been doing, um, and how staff and faculty have been absolutely preparing um, and getting excited about you coming to see you Denver. And I will say this, this, thank you for coming here. We're excited you're here with us. And I thank you for the opportunity to talk to you. This isn't something that I, as your attorney, most get to do most of the time, um, but I appreciate the opportunity. So I wanna give a quick kind of uh, overview of where we are today. I think uh, we'll start with what I know is on my mind a lot, which is the Delta variant. Um, we are all very concerned about how that's moving through. Uh, I think a couple things that um, have placed CU Denver in perhaps a, a, a spot that's a little bit more positive or perhaps gives us a little bit more confidence and that has to do with vaccinations. Um, as, as you've probably heard across the country, vaccinations are the way that we're gonna get out of what's going on in the pandemic. And so we have been and we will continue to encourage everybody to get a vaccine. Uh, we have had vaccine buses on campus, and in fact, uh, I learned recently that Kelly Mason, who's on our call here too and does a great job for us, has actually arranged for the vaccine bus to be on campus um, every three weeks till the end of the semester because we believe in it so much. And so I would just encourage you, number one, to start off with get your vaccine. And I can't thank our students enough already because what we've learned is that 87% of you have already gotten your vaccine, which is just tremendous. When you think about statewide, nationwide, um, you know, Colorado, 87% is just amazing. And that is speaks to your commitment to uh, each other. And it speaks to your commitment to our community. And I, I thank you for that. Kind of a follow up to that is that our staff and faculty, and we started gathering information about their vaccine status. And over half of our staff and faculty have already kind of notified us where they're headed on the vaccine and 97% of them have been vaccinated. So what does that mean for you? Well, as we know in this new world, being vaccinated isn't 
doesn't give you absolute freedom to do everything you want, do anything you want. It doesn't necessarily keep you from ever getting sick. What it does do is it keeps you um, as healthy as you can be. It keeps you from getting seriously ill. One big thing that it does do is it helps you from having to be quarantined or isolated, frankly, in most circumstances. So that's why we'd also encourage students to get vaccinated because if you get vaccinated, you won't have to miss a ton of classes if you're sitting next to somebody necessarily who gets ill. And I know Lacey's gonna talk a little bit more about that as we get further into this. So I'd say get vaccinated. Our community is doing it, we're doing it. And I'm just, I'll, I'll just implore you to continue to do it. If you have any questions about why any of us have been vaccinated, we're happy to share our stories with you about why it is because that is important. And so we're gonna, we're gonna I'm just gonna push that on you for a while. Um, other things that we continue to work on, um, our staff and faculty have been preparing and recognizing that um, you're going to that students returning to campus, especially those of you who may be seniors, um, it's going to be a little different. And so our goal is to help create opportunities and spaces to welcome you to campus, to provide you opportunities to connect, to make those first friendships or renew friendships, and to get to know your faculty members. And those faculty members have been doing incredible work, and Lindsay may talk about that, incredible work to get themselves ready to prepare for what uh, they're going to be teaching you this fall and how they're going to be teaching you. So I will say this. I think that um, in closing, we continue to have our Links Together group. There's a number of us, and I happen to be here today with the chancellor. And we continue to monitor literally minute by minute um, what's going on in the world. And we recognize that minute by minute, things seem to be changing. And I, you know, I can tell you with, with me and my kids and my family, it's, it's scary at times and I get it. Um, I think that part of what will help bring us forward, and this is going to be our goal, is to continue to share with each other, be together and do what we can to continue to offer and have in-person classes this fall, because we are confident that with the percentages of, of you being vaccinated and our staff and faculty, that is our best hope. And that is our plan. That's what we're gonna rely on. And right now we're doing a great job. So I'm really confident that we're gonna to continue to be able to do that. Um, as we move forward, like I said, every minute changes, literally. Um, one of the things that we talked a little bit about today, you know, I, I, with some of my team is, I probably tell you, carry a mask around in your pocket because I think the time is coming or the time will soon come when people will need to be wearing masks in different environments than perhaps we have even if we're vaccinated over the summer. Now we do require anybody who's unvaccinated to wear a mask on campus. Those unvaccinated folks are also required to be tested on a regular basis and also provide a daily health attestation. But I think even those of us who are vaccinated, I just encourage you to carry a mask around your pocket because I think that's, I think that's gonna come, come and be something that we're gonna be working with um, in the not too distant future. And it, very well be that in different circumstances, in different situations, we may be asked to wear masks, um, whether that's going into a store, whether it's going on the RTD, because RTD continues to have a, a mask requirement. I just think it's a wise thing to do is to have your mask ready and um, be, recognize that masking and wearing a mask isn't the worst thing in the world. If it takes us, takes us to do that, to care for each other, um, to continue to be able to be in person, then that's okay. So, that's what I have for you today. And I look forward to Anthony to more of the questions. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Amber, so much. And just to, to give a, a quick and, and very honest and authentic, thank you so much for the leadership the two of you and so many others have provided uh, over the last month, a year and a half. It, not, not necessarily the easiest ride for anybody, but thank you to both for your, for your leadership in that space. We have a, a great group uh, here and I'm going to open it up for some quick introductions. Uh, Lindsay, I'll turn it over to you. Hi everybody, I'm Lindsay Hamilton. I am the director of the Center for Excellence in Teaching and Learning. So I'll talk to you a little bit about what classes are gonna look like and the class formats later on. Um, I'm also an associate professor in the psychology department. So maybe you have me this fall in one of your courses. If not, sign up for one of my courses in the future. I'd love to see you. Thanks, Lindsay. My name is Chris Hilton and I'm the student body president this upcoming year. Um, I'm really going to speak to what it's like getting adjusted to the campus, how to start off, where your books are, campus IDs, all that basic stuff that you need to get it rolling. 
Hi there, my name is Lacey Clint and I am the CU Denver COVID case manager. So I'll be talking to you a little bit later about testing on campus, vaccine exemptions, and all things COVID and contact tracing. I'm also an environmental health specialist and I graduated from CU Denver 14 years ago. So I love this campus and we're glad to see you guys. My name is Emily Wagner and I'm the first year experience associate director. So you'll be hearing a little bit from me around first year experiences, our second year experiences that we're offering to students and also some parent and family and orientation questions too. And I also teach in our FYE department as well. I'm teaching an anime class this fall. So very excited to see students back in person. Hi everybody, I'm Tirza Watts. I'm the Director of Student Life and Campus Community. We are your everything office to get involved on campus and to find friends. Um, we work with student government, our newspaper, leadership programming, et cetera, um, and student clubs. And so today I'm gonna to talk about all the events you can get plugged in on the first three or four weeks of school. Excellent, thank you all for, for taking the time to be here today. I'm gonna give a, a quick overview of how we're gonna run down the next 45 minutes or so together um, so that you all, all kind of have an understanding of, of what to expect. Um, when we opened up registration for this event, we have about 300 folks who signed up. Um, we had about 200 individual questions come in. We did our best to kind of synthesize what those all look like. And, and we have about eight different categories, everything from course formats to COVID policy and safety protocols, um, how to get connected on campus and engaged, uh, what housing is going to look like. So we have a, a guest from our, our housing team who's going to jump in here in a little bit. Uh, and, and of course, what the first week of classes looks like. In order for about the next 15 minutes, we're going to keep the Q&A closed off uh, so that you can kind of focus on, on these main topics. We'll open up that at about 4.30. Our ghost panelists behind the scenes will, will start jumping in there and feverishly answering questions. There might be a couple that they they throw my way so that we can ask them live. Um, and at, there's a chance that at the by the end of this, your exact question may not have been answered. There's gonna be a resources page that we, uh, that we put up uh, in, in the last couple of minutes. On our Links Together website, you can go there and you can submit questions any anytime. Uh, and we'll follow up within a day or two to get you responses to those questions. So what we wanna make sure happens is by the time you're you're coming to campus, you have everything that you need to feel really comfortable uh, in this environment. So, without further ado, uh, one one question and, and a group of questions that came up very frequently, especially with the changes that we've seen over the last eighteen months. And I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this over to you, Dr. Hamilton. Can you talk a little bit about what our course fam format's gonna look like? What's the same? What's different? Um, and a little about the the classroom expectations as we move into the fall. Thanks, Anthony, definitely. So we have four types of classes, class formats that we're offering in the fall, and we've been offering now for a year and a half. Um, so you should be somewhat familiar with them now, but let's go through each of them quickly. In-person is your traditional taught on campus, in-person at pre-scheduled meeting times. So you will be expected to come to campus, and you'll have a classroom assigned, go to that classroom. And in that classroom, you're gonna get all the great teaching that you've come to expect from CU Denver, the lecture, discussions, activities, all happening within the classroom. Hybrid courses are gonna be taught as a mix of in-person, on-campus classroom at preset meeting times, and also more flexible, uh, online learning components. So done at more at your own pace. Um, each hybrid course will have its own schedule kind of set. So you wanna really pay attention to your course catalog and when you're registering for the class, what it might say when you're expected to be there in person. We also have remote as a format and that is taught virtually using Zoom like we are today uh, at preset meeting times. So that means there is a day and time of the week that you are expected to log into Zoom and the classroom activities will take place virtually in that setting. So all the same great teaching just in a virtual format. And then we have online and online are gonna be courses that are taught in a more flexible uh, schedule, all online. 
So this is me imploring you all, if you haven't already, make sure you can register and log in for Canvas. That is our learning management website. All your courses should have a Canvas page, whatever format they are. Um, online courses will be run almost entirely through that Canvas course, but the other formats will also probably rely on Canvas use as well. So please log in for that. Um, I can tell you that the majority of our courses we're offering for fall have some sort of in-person component. So either in-person or hybrid type courses. So if you want to be on campus, you should be able to be on campus. We have lots of offerings for you. And I can also tell you that the faculty have been working tire, tirelessly over this last year and a half uh, training on how to best teach in the different formats and how to uh, best give you the experiences you want in the classroom. And we are ready to greet you and meet you in the classroom, whether that's virtually or in person. We will be there for you. Thanks, Lindsay. Uh, Chris, the, the next one, uh, Chris Puckett, is for, for you. You touched on it a bit in the welcome. Um, and I think really looking at COVID policy and just what how are things changing there? What does that look like? Um, you know, we had a number of questions about the vaccine requirement and the exemption process. Could you just talk us through that a little bit? Absolutely. So CU Denver, along with uh, all of the University of Colorado campuses in Colorado, have adopted a vaccine requirement. That means that all of our students, staff, and faculty must receive the vaccine requirement or vaccine uh, at some point. Um, there are exemptions and there are exemptions available. We don't uh, for religious, personal, and medical reasons. Uh, there is a form. Uh, if, if you haven't been vaccinated and you don't intend to because of your medical, personal, or religious reasons, you'll just fill out a form. What'll then happen is we'll, uh, you'll get you engaged into our weekly or uh, our weekly testing for COVID just to make sure we're all safe. You'll also need to wear a mask. Um, and we ask for daily health attestations when you're in that status. So at this point, uh, we also, some, some people have asked, what information does the university have about my vaccine status? Well, in Colorado, if you're a Colorado student, uh, we actually have access to the statewide database. And so we are actually able to verify uh, a bit of information about whether you've been vaccinated or not. Now, if you're from out of state or international, it's really, 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 really important for you to make sure you fill out the form and let us know your vaccine status. Um, and we can even follow up. I know our contact tracing team as well, if you're interested in talking about the vaccine, figuring out what it may mean for you, how we can help support you in that. Um, but uh, we're very interested in making sure that our, our, our international and out-of-state students sign up so that we can um, get you into the right space and support you and get you ready for uh, first day and first week of classes. The plan is that first week will be the first week we actually do testing for people who've asked for an exemption. Um, I will tell you this, we haven't received a ton of ex exceptions, exemptions, I should say. Uh, we've re received a couple hundred, but that's uh, not a surprise. That's not very many, frankly, when you look at our um, 15 to 17,000 students that will touch the campus in one way or another. So uh, hopefully, Anthony, that gives you what you were looking for. If there's something else, let yeah. me know. That's great. Thanks so much, Chris. Uh, we're going to jump from one Chris to another Chris um, and, and talk with our student body president. Uh, Chris Hilton, would you chat? And I, I think you might fall into this group a little bit. We have some students that are, are coming back to us after a couple of years, uh, and we had a, a change of pace for the last year or so, we have a, a good number of students who either will be, this will be their first year with us at CU Denver or their second year students or transfer students who have already spent a year with us but haven't even been on campus yet. I think that might be you to some extent, right? Um, what's the first, what, what are we doing to prepare for the first week? What do you need to do? Books, student IDs, all of the good stuff. Um, yeah, I actually was a, a transfer student last year. So up until this summer when I started coming on campus for student government, I hadn't seen any of the new buildings or really been inside student, like student commons building. Um, really what I would say is that majority of our student journey, besides the commons building, which is getting us all set up logistically, is in the Tivoli. So in the Tivoli, you're gonna be able to go get your books. You're gonna be able to get your ID, which is super important. Um, 
right there on the main floor. You're going to see if you walked in there like today, you would see a thousand signs directing you right to where you should be on that main section. You'll be able to get your ID, get your RTD pass if you would like to sign up for that, which is important. I know we're going to talk about it a little bit later. Um, when it comes to books, the really nice thing is that a lot of the professors have already communicated that information to the bookstore. So you can just look up your class schedule and find what books you need. Uh, if you're cautious about it, or if you would prefer to do like a digital book or something like that, you can actually wait until most of these classes are on Canvas. And what I have noticed, at least in last year, is professors are mentioning like, oh, make sure you get like, definitely get it from Amazon if you'd like, but make sure you get this edition. Um, so like, don't hesitate to wait and ask that type of question or look for that type of information. Um, yeah, uh, but really it's your preference. I tend to rent my books just because some of them I will not look at again. And the ones that are like for my major, I'm in public health, the introduction to public health, I bought that book because I'm like, I'm probably gonna have to reference this a lot over the next few years. Kristen, I'm wondering if you can speak to this one. We had quite a few questions come in looking at uh, resources to go to around job opportunities, whether those be like work study jobs on campus, um, looking, already beating kind of the that internship search process. Uh, any, any wisdom you can share with the group? Um, the wisdom is short and simple. Well, actually it can be complicated, but Handshake is a perfect place to start. That is our web portal that we use to find all that information, whether it's internships, um, student um, job postings, for example, when SGA was just hiring for a couple of our open Senate positions, we posted on Handshake. Um, there's also several divisions inside the school where you can go and talk about, you know, pre-med internships. Where should I be looking? What should I be interested in? Um, I'm in public health and I've attended a few of those and they gave me guidance on like, hey, this is a class you should look at right now. Plus, this is an internship that usually opens in like fall sometime. Keep an eye out for that. But if you're really just wanting to like get an idea of it, Handshake, you'll log in with your CU Denver ID. Um, so you don't have to memorize another password and then you can just start searching for whatever you're interested in, which is actually just a really cool way to get an idea of what's out there. Awesome. Thanks, Chris. Um, I'm going to plug also our Lynx Connect team uh, over in the, the Tivoli as well. Uh, it's an incredible space. If you haven't been able to visit yet, um, it, it opened up the semester before we we ran into all the COVID stuff. So uh, definitely check that out. Our career center is in there just an incredible amount of resources for students uh, as you're going through the search process, if you're looking for support on, on anything from your resume to cover letters to, you know, is this the right major for me kind of conversations. Um, Amber, one thing that Chris mentioned was the RTD pass. There has been some, uh, some changes with that over the last year or so. Would you mind just chatting a little bit about what that's going to look like as we enter into the, the fall semester? Yeah, so the RTD pass is available for students as an opt-in opportunity this year. So that means students can choose if they would like to have the college pass, which is a discounted pass to be able to use light rail, bus services, and things like that. Um, the pass this year for, for students opt into to runs uh, from August 1st, so it's valid now, all the way until January 31st. It's $135 that students can again choose to purchase if that's something that you would like to participate in. And there is actually a place in the Tivoli Student Union that you can go to to purchase that. It's at the campus ID station, so you could knock it out at the same time that you go get your links card and just uh, purchase it there and then use any of the public transit opportunities here in Denver, which is pretty great because parking is not at an abundance in a downtown campus. So any way you can get yourself to campus and not have to worry about parking is excellent. There's also great bike trails just to think about wellness on the side. So if you wanna ride your bicycle to campus, you can do that, lots of places to park your bike. Um, and we even have a bike shop here on campus in the wellness center so we can help you service your bike if you needed to. But lots of ways to get to campus. So definitely start thinking about how you will do that. What will the logistics look like for you? Because that is a pretty major component if you're a commuter-based student um, in terms of the time you might put into coming to campus every day. Thanks, Amber. Uh, I'm going to also plug a couple of things that have happened recently on campus. Uh, if you're familiar with campus, uh, just outside of North Classroom, they built, and I believe our architecture students designed it, if I'm not mistaken, um, a, a kind of a, bar, a bike rack 
hangar. It's enclosed. Um, it's a really cool space. So if you're biking to campus, you have that as a place to, to store your bike safely. Um, and then also uh, regarding the RTD pass, uh, and I, Michelle, our director of financial aid services is in the background, uh, ready to answer some questions. Uh, one of the questions is, that we've received a lot of, well, is my financial aid going to cover this? And the, the cost for transportation is built into your cost of attendance at CU Denver. And so while well, we're a change from years past where everybody was charged the, the $135 student fee for the RTD college pass, it will still be covered as part of your cost of attendance for CU Denver. So if you get a disbursement or a refund after you uh, after your financial aid disperses, that could be used towards that. So Michelle, I hope you're not uh, not cringing and clenching your teeth behind, teeth behind the scenes there. Um, Lacey, I'm gonna turn to you. Lots of questions about, it, it, obviously with the situation and circumstances, COVID safety um, protocols, what, do, what does testing and vaccines look like? Um, I'm gonna open that one up. It's, it's a pretty big can of worms, so I'm gonna let you take it. Definitely, and uh, thank you guys for letting me speak. Um, I do wanna say first and foremost that my first piece of advice and the biggest piece of advice I can give you is to get vaccinated. Um, I've been working COVID stuff for over a year and a half now. And if any of you have any doubts or you want to talk on the cell phone, I'll give you my cell phone number and you can call me at night or at six in the morning to talk about it. If it, if it means that I can tell you more science about the vaccine, I'll, I'll call you on your cell phone and we can chat. Um, but besides getting vaccinated, I do want to talk to you about our testing program on campus. So we are opening a testing site on campus. Um, the details are still getting worked out right now, but essentially if you are an unvaccinated individual for whatever reason, you will be enrolled into our testing program. So what that entails is a weekly reminder to schedule a test, and then you will need to show up to that test. And right now we're planning to buy saliva tests. Um, what, we're, what we're hoping to get out of this is that we have a safe campus, less COVID transmission on campus, and that we're keeping our unvaccinated population safe um, because not everyone who is unvaccinated is choosing that. So um, we just need to keep that in mind and respect that. Um, other things for unvaccinated individuals um, is, as Chris said, the daily health attestation. And Kelly, if you're there, if you can put that link in the chat just so people know what that is. Basically, anytime you're coming onto campus and you're unvaccinated, you'll need to fill out this daily health attestation. And then the other thing that you'll need to do is wear a mask if you're unvaccinated. And something I think we all need to keep in mind is that even if you are vaccinated or unvaccinated, if you would like to wear a mask, you should. And no one should judge you and you should not judge anyone for wearing a mask. So just please keep that in mind and just know that it's for the health and safety of everyone around you, as well as yourself and your family members. So um, that's my little mask push for the day. Um, there was a question about booster shots in the fall and uh, Chris can speak to this too, but there's really no um, definitive news on that yet. But if we'll just follow the science as we have for the last year and a half. And if boosters come about and we can get them on campus, you can guarantee that we will get them here. Um, but like Chris said too, the vaccine bus um, that Kelly was able to get coming often every three weeks, I think, if you can take an advantage of that and get your vaccine there, that's a, that's an, a good option for a vaccine. Um, additional safety measures that are being taken just our um, facilities crew and our cleaning crew is really taking the time to, to amp up the HVAC systems and make sure that they're all working correctly. So our air exchanges are, are really up to speed where they need to be, as well as just daily cleaning and, and disinfecting of, of places. So as Chris said, getting you back to campus is our utmost priority and we really want to see your faces in person and not on the Zoom. So um, in terms of contact tracing, if, if someone 
if you or someone is positive for COVID or you're feeling sick for whatever reason, you need to self-report. And Kelly, if you're there, if you can put that link also in the chat, this is a really important link to have. And just know that all of these things you can find on our website, it's really easy. You can search CU Denver testing, CU Denver vaccinations, CU Denver self-report form. So as I was saying, if you're positive or you know someone who's positive, please self-report and my team will personally reach out to you and it's a no shame environment. Everything is kept confidential. We're not judging your life. We're not judging your personal life. We're not judging where you got it from or how you got it. We just want to talk to you and get some details so that we can prevent any further spread and so that we can keep the campus open and get you back out there to class or to your social events. And then I guess my closing statement that I'll make, and Chris touched on it a little bit, if you are a vaccinated person and you're exposed to a positive person and you have no symptoms, so you're not feeling sick, but you've been exposed, our program is set up so that you will almost be automatically cleared to return back to campus. So that is, that is huge and that is very, very important for you to to continue to do well in class and to get out there socially again. If you are unvaccinated and you are exposed to someone who's positive, no matter what, if you don't have symptoms or if you do, you will be quarantined. So there's a little bit of a difference there if you're vaccinated or not. So if you're, if you're on the edge and, and you're just thinking about the pros and cons about a vaccine, one of the biggest pros is if you are exposed, and you're not having any symptoms, you will automatically be cleared to return to campus. So um, like I said, self-report, email me, call me. I'm happy to talk to you guys about anything COVID related and we're glad that you're here at CU Denver. Um, like I said, I'm a graduate and um, I love this campus. Thanks guys. Thanks Lacey and thanks for everything that you did to, to help keep keep us safe this year. Uh, my team has been on campus since August um, at Link Central, and we've been incredibly fortunate to stay healthy um, Monday through Friday the whole time. So, so thank you. We've seen the cleaning crews. We've, we've seen all the changes. So, so thanks so much for, for doing that. Uh, we are opening up that Q&A. So I know that our ghost panelists behind the scenes are ready to, to fire away uh, some responses. So if you have some more that you want to toss in there, absolutely do that. Emily, I am going to turn it over to you. Our first year and second year experience extraordinaire. Uh, just talk about what kind of what kind of resources are out there for, for folks as they're coming to campus just to navigate whether you are a first year or second year student or you might be a grad student and just dive into this for the first time. Um, what, what kind of things will you have going on? Yeah, absolutely. We are so excited. I cannot stress that enough to be back in person and see your faces in person. And we have a lot planned for you all for these first few weeks. So I know the big question is, where do I go? Maybe you're still confused about where your classes are. Maybe you're trying to find Einstein's. Me too. I'm with you. Uh, just come by our table. We will have a Just Ask Me table outside of our beautiful brand new learning commons, which is attached to our City Heights residence hall. And we will have that there for the first two weeks of school. And it's just for you to ask questions. It can be about what does this building abbreviation mean? Or where's this parking lot? Or I don't know where to start. Where do I go? Uh, we're going to be there to help you, both student staff and professional staff. So you may see me there. You may see some of our peer advocate leaders there, uh, but we're there to help you. We'll also be doing some campus spotlight tours the first two weeks. These are not admissions tours. These are expedited, quick overview tours of the campus. So you can just get a quick glimpse as to where things are located. And that email with those links to sign up has gone out to our students. So again, check your student email if you haven't yet. Uh, we've also sent out information for a lot of our uh, second year students because I know your first year was probably not the ideal college experience you thought it would be. So uh, we, we get that. And we have planned a lot of really great um, different ways for you to get involved on campus this upcoming year. Um, so again, an email went out this week to you all with information on our second year interest groups that we're offering for you. We have a bunch of events that we're going to be putting on the first couple weeks and uh, for both our second year students and our incoming first year students to welcome you to campus. So again, keep an eye out on your CU Denver email and we will send all those updates there. 
um, and come by, you know, stop by our table. If you have questions, if you're looking to get involved, I know Tirza is a great resource for that too. And so is Chris. Um, we're here to help you just get connected and feel welcomed to campus because we're excited to see you back here too. Awesome. Thanks, Emily. We are going to pull in a special guest uh, to talk a little bit about uh, housing and what that looks like. We have a brand new building on campus um, and it is getting ready to be populated. So uh, Sarah, uh, Sarah Ledger is our associate director over there. Uh, I'm gonna turn it over to you to just kind of talk about how's it going, what's it look like and, and what should students who are living on campus this fall expect? Yes, thank you, Anthony. So hi everyone, I'm Dr. Sarah Ledger. Um, I oversee all the residence life in our residence halls on campus. We're so excited to welcome um, so many students to on-campus housing this year. Um, City Heights is our brand new residence hall that will be opening um, and opening its doors to welcome our first year students on August 18th. Um, we are going to be finishing that construction on that building on time and on budget, which is really exciting for our department um, and is super exciting for kind of the campus culture in general. Um, with our residence hall um, at City Heights, we'll also be an attached learning commons building that will house a lot of our student um, facing support services. Um, and so we're just really excited for the ways that we can continue to provide support to all of our on-campus students. Um, our upper division, returning um, students, upperclassmen students, graduate students, those students will also be able to be housed in Lakes Crossing, which is our current residence hall that's been on our campus for um, the last 12 years or so. And so if you're still looking for on-campus housing options, we are still welcoming students to um, apply for campus on-campus housing and complete those contracts. We will accept those all the way up um, throughout the semester. So if you're still looking for those options, please let us know. Um, in terms of welcoming students on campus, like I said, our first year student move-in day is going to be Wednesday, August 18th. And on that day, we're going to welcome um, a little over 600 students into our residence halls. And um, a lot of our students that have already signed our contracts have received some pretty lengthy emails um, from me already detailing out those move-in logistics. Um, we like to remind our students and their families that because of the location of City Heights, specifically um, right in the middle of our campus, there is no designated parking um, or a loading area for that hall. So there is a very structured way that we are doing some unloading for move-in day. We'll have a host of volunteers there to help you and your um, guests unload your personal belongings to get you checked into the residence hall and all that good stuff. Um, one thing I wanna remind everyone if you're moving into on-campus housing um, to get your student ID early. Um, we uh, really use our student ID on our campus for a variety of reasons, but if you live in on-campus housing, that will also function as your bedroom or suite key, as well as your meal plan card. Um, so we require that you have your student ID in hand before you even um, move into the residence hall. If you are not local, that is okay. We are working with our ID station based out of the bookstore to open up early on first year move-in day. So they're opening up at 7 a.m. that day so that you can stop by the Tivoli before you get into move-in um, to pick up your ID at that point. Um, all of our returning and upperclassmen students will get a chance to move in between August 19th and August 22nd um, at Links Crossing. So again, you should have received an email if you are living on campus uh, to register for a move-in date and time um, for both first year and returning move-in weekends. So again, I can answer lots of different questions about move-in if you have questions about that. Um, the other really exciting thing this year to note about housing and dining is, is that we are expanding our meal plan options as well. So all of our students, faculty, and staff will have an option to purchase a meal plan. Even if you don't live on campus, you can still have a commuter meal plan, um, which will allow you to eat at both the dining hall at City Heights, as well as the Eat Food Market at Lakes Crossing, and our brand new Einstein's Bagels, which will be fully open in the spring 2022 semester. That is awesome. Sarah, thanks for jumping in. I know we had quite a few questions about that area of uh, of campus. So thanks so much for joining us uh, and sharing that information. And I'm especially excited about a commuter meal plan. It's going to make making lunches a lot easier. Uh, so the last of kind of our pre-scheduled, and I, I wanted to save this one because the big one uh, is for tears. Uh, we've had just, and there, I promised myself there are a few words I'm never using again related to precedented, uh, but it's been, it, it's been a, a whole big, change um, and, and getting back to campus and being able to connect and see each other again. 
Can you talk about what it's going to look like um, and how students can get involved? I saw a question actually in the q and I took a quick peek about clubs, organizations. How do we get to reconnect with each other? I would be happy to tell you all about it. We're so excited that you'll be back in person. And I do want to affirm for you, if you're nervous about coming back in person and interacting in the way that we normally do um, as college students, um, we will still have some things that are virtual, right? We're going to have a nice blend. We learned some things during COVID, um, but we will be bringing back lots of in-person options as well. And again, anybody can wear a mask at any time if that makes you feel comfortable. So let me jump in and tell you a few of the things that we have going on. I wanna start with Prep Week. Um, Prep Week is actually a series of four days of events and those events happen the week before classes. So we start on Tuesday the 17th and there's an online virtual program for first-generation students. We wanna celebrate that you're the first person in college in, in your family to either come to college or um, start this process of higher education. And so that program again, Email has gone out where you can sign up for the first gen program. Fabulous program. So that's Tuesday, the 17th. The 18th is our big move in day, as Sarah has already shared. Um, and so we're excited to welcome new students to that brand new City Heights first year residence hall. On Thursday, we have our great conference C2C, and that stands for Connect to Campus. And so it's a little mini conference where you can come and find out information from a variety of different offices, um, meet lots of students. We have tons, and this will be on Zoom, um, tons of breakout rooms that'll be led by student leaders like Chris um, and our student involvement ambassadors, our peer advocate leaders. We have tons of student leaders that'll be part of this um, conference. You can attend at 10 a.m. or 2 p.m. And it lasts roughly about two and a half hours. So again, if you sign up, you'll get a confirmation with the Zoom link for C2C and you'll get to learn lots of fabulous information on how to get connected. Um, and then the next thing is one of my favorite events and this is a rite of passage. It is a ritual that you need to attend, new student convocation. And that is on Friday, August 20th. And so this event, check-in for students starts at 9 a.m. So you wanna arrive to campus if you're a commuter before nine. Um, you're gonna come to the Tivoli Lawn. So the big lawn that's on the back side of the building between Tivoli and the City Heights Residence Hall. You'll check in, you're gonna get a t-shirt, you're gonna get a colored wristband, which is needed for that day. Um, there's a bunch of welcome messages that you're gonna hear from a variety of people. And then we are going to do something that's super cool called Playfair. It is the largest icebreaker um, and so we have a professional facilitator coming in and we will have a thousand plus students doing icebreakers together on the lawn. We're super excited about it. I've done Playfair many times. You make so many friends and meet so many people and you do a lot of laughing. Um, and when that event ends on the backside, while we're doing Playfair, we will be setting up a huge lunch. So if you register, you will get a free lunch and we will have our first of four student organization fairs where you can meet various student groups. And we have about 40 of our 140 plus groups that will um, participate that day. So you can come and meet people that already know, hey, we're seeking new members. The thing I would put in the back of your head about being involved is asking groups as you meet with them, hey, are you guys gonna meet in person? Are you gonna meet hybrid? Are you gonna meet online? And so there will be clubs that do a variety of different ways to get together this year. The next thing I want to remind you of is the next week. It's called Welcome Week. And so there will be tabling every day of the week. And Emily has already mentioned the JAM tables. So JAM again stands for Just Ask Me. So those will be on campus as well as departments like my own will have tables out on campus. We want you to stop by and go, what you got? We will have lots of free swag for you. We will have information for you about how to get connected on campus. Um, and the big thing that happens during Welcome Week is on Thursday, August 27th, if I have the date in my head right, that is Block Party. So this is a CU Denver event. It actually happens in downtown. So you'll cross Spear Boulevard. And we have um, on that street, there is a variety of CU Denver classroom buildings. We shut down the street and we have a huge party. So Block Party will be on Thursday. The last um, two events I wanna to mention to you, one is called um, Welcome Bash at Wellness. It's our brand new partnership. So I've partnered with Amber, who's on this um, Zoom meeting with her department along with Housing and Dining. And our three departments are holding a huge party, student organizations fair. Every one of the units within the Wellness Center will have programming going on. Um, we'll have music, free food. Um, again, lots of t-shirts. First couple of weeks of school is the best time to get free stuff. So come join us at Welcome Bash at Wellness. And that will be our big student organizations fair. We'll have at least 60 organizations and 10 uh, departments there recruiting for people. An example of a department that might recruit would be the um, 
Office of Global Engagement. They're there to tell you about study abroad. We haven't mentioned them yet in this call. Um, we will have uh, the biology club will probably be there recruiting people for the biology club or the cycling club. Um, our intramurals program and our club sports will be there doing demos. Um, so again, welcome Bash at Wellness. It is on Wednesday, September 1st, 4 to 6 p.m. And the last event I'll mention before um, I turn it back to Anthony is Fall Fest. This is a tradition on our campus. This is our um, event that is tri-institutional, and we haven't used that phrase yet on this webinar. We have three colleges sharing our property. So um, Metropolitan State University of Denver, the Community College of Denver, and CU Denver. We come together um, September 15th and 16th, and we will have a huge event from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Wednesday the 15th and Thursday the 16th. Um, about 150 plus tables and booths. There'll be vendors there. There'll be live entertainment. Um, and so basically we wanna invite you to come hang out with your larger campus community on those two days, um, food trucks, the work. So lots of things to do the first couple of weeks of school. That sounds incredible. Thank you, Tears. Uh, and you, you said a word that I haven't heard in 18 months, which is free food on campus, which come, I mean, that's what it's all about, right? Um, that's right. And we that's, all wear gloves, and most, I think all your servers will have gloves on and masks. So there it is. That's perfect. Um, that's great. Um, I, I saw a couple questions in the, uh, in the Q&A. So I'm going to, I'm going to peel off one that I'm not sure I've answered yet. Uh, there's a question about if, uh, if you're fully vaccinated, if you have to do an attestation daily and pick up a wristband, like uh, you had previously needed to. I see the, I see the, see the head shake, right, Chris? No wristbands. No. Yeah. No wristbands, unless you're going to one of Tears' parties, apparently. Um, in which case, then you need a wristband. But no, no wristbands, if you're vaccinated, that's a full stop. There's nothing else for you to do. So that's, great. that's a great question. But yeah, we're good. Thanks, Chris. A um, couple of other things going on on campus. I, if you are uh, familiar with the Student Commons building, which is in fact the Student Commons building, not the Qdoba building, uh, as it is often referred to, uh, Qdoba is officially back open in the building. Uh, so I know that that has, it has seen a line for the first time in a while. Um, they, they just reopened uh, yesterday. So. Uh, that's going on. I also want to take a second and plug uh, a bit shamelessly the work that we're doing at Link Central. So for those of you who are thinking about, you know, you're running into some financial aid questions, scholarship questions, uh, some, some pieces with enrollment on kind of the, the process side and, and might be running into a couple of things. Uh, it also with the billing side. So we, we partner really closely with our Bursar team about billing. Um, and, and bills will hit officially tomorrow. You may have already seen some charges in your account. The, the bill will, will, will be live and, and uh, active tomorrow. Uh, we at Link Central are here to help you to navigate um, everything that, that you need and, and, and are best in a one-stop shop so that you don't have to bounce all over campus. Our team's working really diligently to, uh, to make sure you have everything you need. We are experiencing a pretty high volume of calls and in-person traffic even already. So if you're, you're calling in, uh, I'll have all the information here at the end. Uh, be patient, but we are there to help you and to make sure you have everything that you need. Um, and also we're gonna have a new technology that's coming online here uh, when, you, when you get back to campus. So we're actually gonna be able to essentially sign up for a spot in line. So instead of having to wait in a long line and just stand there, uh, you'll be able to use a software that you just put, your, put yourself in line, you can do what you need to do. Uh, and then when it's your turn, you'll get a text message that says, hey, come on up um, and, and we'll get everything taken care of for you. So just want to give you that information. Uh, I got one here for you, Emily. Um, can you talk a little bit about the campus spotlight tours for new students and second year students who might be feeling a little bit nervous uh, about campus because they haven't been here yet? Yeah, absolutely. So like I said, um, students that are incoming first year students and sophomore students, um, check your student emails for all of our updates. That's where we send you the news. Um, so we did send those links out to sign up for them. So again, these are not the amazing admission tours that you can do through our admissions office here. These are meant for only the students. Um, so no parents or guests. And it's meant to be just a quick 30 minute, 45 minute walk around campus. We'll point out some of the main buildings such as the Tivoli, the Student Commons building, our main classroom buildings on campus, our library, things like that. 
and just answer some questions that you may have those first two weeks while we're giving you that brief overview tour. So um, again, we know that it's been um, hard for a lot of folks to make it down to campus. And so if you haven't been to campus yet and you're just a little nervous or you're a planner like me and you like to know exactly what building you're walking into for all your classes, um, just feel free to again, check your student email. You'll see the links in there to sign up. Um, we recommend signing up sooner rather than later. Some of our times have filled um, and we are only offering a few limited spots during those first two weeks. So um, if you haven't, uh, if you don't see a time that works for you, we also recommend checking out the virtual tour that's available online as well. That gives you a lovely little bird's eye view of campus too. Um, but again, if you're still lost, just come by the table, the Just Ask Me table. We are happy to point out buildings to you. Um, some of us may even want to walk around with you. So yep. feel free to come on by if you're not able to sign up for those tours. And I think it came up in the, the Q&A and it probably got answered already, but I'm going to, to, to plug it again. Uh, things are still pretty quiet around campus and you can definitely come and pick up your student ID. And so if you need to get it, I mean, there was zero line yesterday to do it. Uh, I highly encourage you to do that ahead of time. Um, we, we helped a, a, a new student and her mom and brother uh, check out the different buildings on campus today, understand what her schedule is going to be. Um, so if you have questions, that's well, we, we do a lot of the enrollment stuff at Link Central. If you need a map and somebody to point out where the buildings are, we'll, we'll go over your schedule with you and help you navigate that space. So find a couple of your friends that are, are coming to campus too, or maybe you're doing it on your own and, uh, and come visit us. We're happy to help you navigate that whole space. And just again, feel comfortable as you're, you're diving into the first couple of weeks of classes. I'm waiting to see if we've got any more. I, it looks like there's a couple Q and A that are being answered right now. I'm gonna practice my teacher wait time here to see if there's anything else that comes through for us to, to jump on in the last five minutes. Oh, I just saw one, Kelly Mason. Are you ready? Are you, is it, it's your time to shine, Kelly. I saw a question about campus events in a centralized calendar, uh, ways to sign up for things. Uh, if, you want, if you can come off me, even mute, if you don't wanna come on camera, that's okay. Or you can jump on. I'm, I'm gonna turn this one over to you. Oh, hi y'all. I have really terrible lighting. Hello everyone. Um, my name is Kelly Mason. I'm assistant director of university events and one of the your friendly ghost panelists answering lots of questions. Um, so in typical times, I'm responsible for the fun things that happen on campus. Um, tears are alluded to all of our welcome week events and all those fun things. And we're so excited to have you here in person again. Um, we do have um, Student Life has a presence tool, which is a calendar that helps to bring together all of our student org activities and leadership opportunities. And then we also have the university calendar, which brings together everything under one roof um, for events happening at the schools and colleges, the institutional level, and all across campus. So those are your two locations to, to look for events taking place on campus. And we're really excited to welcome you all back. Anthony, can I add something? Yeah. Yeah, so our tool that you've got that university calendar, but we also have my links. Um, Kelly mentioned Presence, which is the name of the software company, but if you look at mylynx.ucdenver.edu, you will find all the events that departments and um, student orgs are putting in. I think there's about 25 to maybe 30 events in there now, but people are still loading stuff, but that's a go-to place to find out what student organizations are doing. Um, and I did see in the chat there was a question about Greek life, and so I yeah. did share that as of this past Friday, um, we finally have um, been announcing that we are bringing Greek life to um, CU Denver. Um, on our campus, it will be referred to as sorority and fraternity life instead of Greek life. So I'm going to call it SFL, sorority and fraternity life. And I have to look over the side so I get this, the names of our groups. Um, we've selected student, six student or, or six organizations to come to our campus and to form chapters, and four of them will come this year. So we have Alpha Phi, which is a national women's fraternity. Um, we have Alpha Psi Lambda, which is a co-ed Hispanic or Latinx interest group. So they do recruit men and women to that group. We have Delta Lambda Pi, 
which is um, a social group that was formed for gay, bisexual, and progressive men. And then we have Lambda Sigma Upsilon, which is a Latino men's fraternity. And we have two other groups. Once those four, four groups are established, we'll bring the second two groups. And then we will continue to seek groups that represent um, identities that are not fulfilled, and we'll bring some more groups in the future. So we are starting officially this fall with tabling, and the first recruitment will happen in the spring. That's awesome. Thanks so much to yeah. both of you for jumping in on those pieces. Um, I saw a couple of other things, and we're, we're running low on time, so uh, I, I want to hit a couple. I saw a question there from Stephanie that was mentioning uh, financial questions. Stephanie, I'm, we're going to put up a, a resource page here in about 30 seconds. Um, it has the Link Central uh, line number on there. I encourage you, if you can, tomorrow, 8 to 5. Uh, if you get in between 8 and 9 a.m., you're going to get yours truly uh, answering phone calls uh, about financial questions. Uh, the number is 303-315-5969. We can help there. Um, we will also be posting this video on both the uh, the Links Together uh, site as well as the uh, the Link Central website and probably a couple of other places. Um, so you'll be, I, I know there were some questions in there about seeing uh, all the links and all the other questions and answers that were, were shared here. So this will all be posted um, online, uh, probably in a, within about 48 to 72 hours, we'll have this up. Um, so check those resources. I cannot say thank you enough to everybody, uh, both our live panelists, ghost panelists, and I think especially to the folks here that, that were able to join. Thank you so much. We cannot wait to see you, work with you, support you, um, whether you're going to be fully online, whether you're going to be totally on campus or something in, in between. Uh, we, we can't wait to, to work with you and make sure that you have everything you need to accomplish the goals that you're setting out to accomplish as we dive into uh, the fall 2021 semester. So I'm gonna pop up a uh, just a quick screen with some resources. Uh, we'll leave that up for a couple minutes and then uh, we'll wrap things up here. So thanks again for being here, everybody.